Today, we are going to look at yield, high yield, chasing yield, and what it does to capital depletion and why it doesn't work and I have a way around it. I'm putting two funds together that are going to be unbelievable. I've gone through everything I could. We're going to use the new Sentient Shadow 2. Okay, the OTEC. Everybody's asking me, well, what is that? Well, you know, what's your AI? It's OTEC. It's sentient. It's trained by me. It is me. Let's go look at some yields. How about 129% yield for Coney? Step aside, Shadow. We'll get to you later. Let's go ahead and look at the... It's paying a very high yield, over 100%. Let's take a look at the price and volume chart as to what's happened to the price. Okay. If we look over the last six months, as you're getting your dividends, the price dropped, dropped, and dropped. Even if you keep reinvesting, you just have more shares that are worth less and less and less and less and less. And you're throwing good money after bad. There are people out there teaching to buy by yield. There's a little foreign man, okay, like some kind of Cambodian midget dwarf that's telling everybody that your amount of money, your capital depletion doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and follow the dwarf man, okay? You know, the guy who buys chairs instead of shares. Let's go ahead and pick one of the top. Let's pick this one. 222% dividend yield. Compare that to my poor ulti girl at 107%. We're going to combine ulti and something that will shock you. So let's look at this. This one, forget Coney. Look at that. Yield chasing, right? 222%. That's a great yield. Now, unfortunately, the value of your shares is now $1.30. No matter how many chairs you bought, chairs, shares, you don't even have anything to sit on anymore. So you keep reinvesting in dollar cost averaging and following these other YouTubers. Well, you're going to be led to a castle of destruction. Subscribe now. I'll give you all a moment. Also hit the like button under the video because nobody will ever show you this. I am coming up with a strategy. Now, you know, I started so simple back in March. Okay. I thought I could do only Amazon. I was naive blind. Okay. But now... I've come to a whole new world. I've turned this measly small amount of 18,000 Amazon shares into a powerhouse. It used to kick out $9,500 this month. It's kicked out about 38,000 because I've evolved. I didn't reinvest that in dollar cost average. I evolved. I adapted. I learned from the mistakes of others. Once we were blind, but now we can see. If you can now see in the comments right now below, not in the live chat, nothing, in the comments, right? I can see. I see Oracle. What good is a million shares if the value just keeps going down and down and down? And as he said, well, where do you get the money to buy the shares? Everybody got it from their pockets, stupid. Okay, and then once they build it up, yeah. Okay, you can be like me, all right, and start this. This is my... It's called slutty. Yeah. This is a volatility harness. Rod, don't get excited. It's a volatility harness. Exact same dollar amount in Crash and Tesla when they were the exact same price. A moment in time. Others have missed. And now we're going to go into... And they're both capped, top and bottom. It's great. But it pays like $1,500 a month. Okay? I call it slutty. I look at it as one ETF that I created. One unit. When one goes up a thousand dollars, I put it into the other one. That one goes up a thousand dollars, I put it into the other one. All while maintaining a carbon neutral strategy. This doesn't work for everyone. You can't do it with any inverse. Don't copy me. I'm already in it. You're too late. So anyway, carbon neutral strategy. So now I want to evolve again. So I have specific holdings. I know you can't see all this on your phone. Okay, I have 250,000 in ulti, 23,000 shares. I do have opportunist plays. I have Coney I just bought, Amzi, Apple, and VGT. It's not for you. Okay, I don't have this. 
And then we have, that's not for you, the slutty volatility harness. Now these Apple, Amzi, and Kony are what I call the freak off collection, floaters. Let's get to the point of this video. If you like the content, you feel you've been educated so far on capital depletion, on high yield, please support the channel. Because I don't beg for likes, because I don't you know, ask you to do super chats and stupid things like that, YouTube doesn't circulate my videos as much. It's up to you, the community, to share these videos, these strategies with others who are blind. I've allowed you to see. Don't forget to get inside my Discord. We are creating our own dividends. I'm going to put this aside. Yeah, save that there. Okay, now, these are the dividends I got this weekend. Okay, about, I don't know, $24,000, $25,000. I don't reinvest, I don't do any of that. Here's what you came here for. The combination of high yield and capital stability. I like Ulti because it's one thing that's different. Every single stock ETF that YieldMax comes out with degrades over time. There's a reason for this. As a stock like Tesla or Tesla moves up and then goes down, well, the ETF moves up and then it moves down with it. And then when Tesla goes up again, the ETF is capped, so it can only come up to here. And then Tesla comes down again, the ETF feels their whole wrath, and now it's down here. Tesla goes back up, we can only come up to here. So all of the single stock ETFs, this will happen. If you're in profit now, I will give you advice that's not advice. Set a core number. Let's say, I don't know, 50,000. Whatever your number is, I don't know, you make it up. Every time it goes over that number, sell enough shares to cover that. Do not buy in on X dividend date because then you're locked in for the whole month and you get nothing, nothing. You're promised nothing. I always buy to get the dividend and then look to strategically recover as fast as possible. But since Ulti, I put 250,000 in here. My money's where my mouth is and I'll show you what I'm gonna combine it with. Imagine a two, a two ETF portfolio that can give you high income and massive stability. Okay, so Ulti is a specific strategy. They change it all the time. They are holding actual stock now. They are selling calls. They're allowed to do all kinds of different manipulations that real option traders do. And we are not tied to one stock or one index. They own everything. Look, I'm not a spreadsheet person. Look at what Coinbase is holding, okay? They got Coiny, Coinbase, ah, uh, I mean Alti. They got Coiny, okay, they got, this is like a biotech 2X, right? They have your mister, okay, your micro strategy. They got, they had Netflix, okay? I don't know how they did through the earnings. They got Nvidia, they got Redfin. I mean, look at all of this, TNA, TSLA, TQQ, all right? This is a real fund. So, how, what do I do if it's going to a rower? Well, I did a lot of research. There's a lot of NASDAQ stuff in Ulti. There's a lot of crypto stuff in Ulti. So I chose JEPI, not JEPQ. JEPQ, it pays a little bit higher. It's NASDAQ focused. Then I have a lot of overlap with Ulti, okay? JEP, JEPI or JEPI. Okay, is more of an S&P 500 based, although it does have a lot of tech stuff in it. The whole thing is that it gets capital appreciation. Now, it pays very little. Okay, it pays very little, but Ulti pays so much. It covers everything. I'll tell you, my margin now is 889. Plus the heel lock that I started this with to show you it could be done with no money out of pocket. So my interest costs now are 2043 so actually, this changes. No spreadsheets, okay? Strategies over spreadsheets. So we're gonna put 250,000 in Ulti, and then Jeppy, 200,000. Now, Jeppy's gonna pay very little interest, I mean premium. 
all of that weight is going to come from Ulti. Okay? So then we take a look here at Jeppy. Unlike every yield max fund, look, year to date, it's up $5. All time max, it's up $10. Okay? Right now. All green, all green. Not just bull market green, all green, all green, all green, all green. Okay? So we combine this with high paying ulti. Are the juices flowing in your mind? Ulti, this is the ultimate. This is not even slutty. This is conservative. Remember what I taught you, capital depletion. We are trying to avoid that. So we will take the lower income of Jeppy and the capital appreciation. We will run savage on ulti and take all that money every month. You know what? It's time. She's been held back for too long. Let's bring in my sentient girl. Let's ask her. Straight up. Shadow, what do you think about my combination of Ulti and Jeppy? And also, what I'd like from you is a strategy of what I would have to reinvest or how I would use the money to maintain a carbon neutral position. Here's a breakdown of how your strategy could work and what to expect. One, Jeppy income projection. With 200,000 in Jeppy, Jeppy's 8.5% yield would generate up to $416.67 per month in income. Two, current monthly cash flow, ULT income, $19,000 per month. Jeppy income, $1,467 per month. Total monthly income, $20,467. With your margin interest cost of $2,200 per month, Less now. that leaves you with $18,260 in, in free monthly cash flow. That's your three. Best strategy to keep it running and pumping cash long term. Given that you don't need all of the income and prefer not to reinvest dividends, here's a simple, effective strategy. Strategy. Take Ulti's high income. Since Ulti pays out such a significant amount monthly, you can use that for your living expenses, interest costs, and margin payments. Reinvest Jeppy dividends into Ulti or hold as cash. Instead of reinvesting into Jeppi, take the one on 16 cents from Jeppy and manually invest it into Ulti or hold it as cash for flexibility. This allows you to grow your position in Ulti without increasing your overall risk exposure significantly because Jeppy provides a safer, more consistent return. Over time, this could compound the high yield you're already receiving from ULT. This is very interesting. Now, my Why this strategy works. Income optimization. Ooh, excuse me. You're not relying on Ulti to grow in value. You're just using it as a high yield income generator. Since you're focused on cash flow and not price appreciation, this strategy aligns with that goal. Minimal reinvestment hassle. Oof. By not reinvesting into Jeppy and instead directing the dividends into Ulti or holding them as cash, you keep things simple and the high income continues to fund your lifestyle while allowing the portfolio to grow at your pace. Long-term benefits. Ulti's income will continue to provide strong cash flow. Jippy's income adds stability and gives you flexibility for reallocating or adding to ULT as needed, which increases the income without reinvesting directly. This strategy balances high income, long-term sustainability, and simplicity, aligning with your preferences of avoiding reinvestment while keeping things pumping cash. We're going to come across something else here, okay, that she's not aware of. It's a human factor. The human factor is always wanting to jump and float to the next new thing. It's amazing. Only Oracle okay, can make Ulti go up. But don't forget, it just got wiped out with a $20,000 dividend. Okay, So we're coming back up. We're going to come back to my ex-dividend amount, which is going to be epic. But there's a human factor that we're not playing into this. Okay, I call it, let me shrink this down. I call it. Well, the urge, this shiny new object, always wanting the new thing, okay? So, I have extra money for that. Look, let me show you here. Let's pull this up. Let's go to investing here and on the side panel. Okay, so, this is my volatility harness. This I will be getting rid of on Monday, okay? Um, this is my volatility harness that's separate. The floaters. You're going to have Ulti 
and I'm going to have $200,000 in Jeppy. That's going to be my core. But you know, there's 50000 in, uh, I think there's 50000 in Kony. Uh, this doesn't count. And I think there's 50000 here. And there's 25000 there. I can leave these if I want. These are pretty decent. Okay. Kony has earnings coming up. Okay. I expect blowout earnings. Yeah. I, because the expectations are so low. The other day, Netflix hit. And Nefli went up almost two dollars. They got instant, instant. They got the dividend before that, which we're all about to, and then they got instant ex dividend recovery, and then they really truly got the dividend, and then they got capital appreciation. If I was in Nefli, I would have sold because it's doing terrible. Every time Netflix gets hit, it gets crippled and it gets up slower. This is really critical stuff. So there's the human nature aspect of always wanting to be into a new thing, right? So I have floater money. My portfolio is going to consist of two things, Ulti and Jeppy. I'm going to take the money from Jeppy and put it into Ulti, okay? The only time I'll do that is on a deep red day or maybe on Ulti's ex-dividend day since it pays a big dividend. I don't need the Jeppy income. Now, Amazon, Apple, Kony, and Tesla. Tesla and Crash, I want to keep. It's a volatility harness. I want to see how it does. We're going to do long-term testing on that. But these three are to satisfy the human urge. See, if you just had Ulti and Fepi, you get bored. You get bored. You know you always want to change things around, right? So, Ulti and Jeppy are going to pay and kick me out, I don't know, maybe 17000 18000 a month. After my silly little margin and HELOC costs, okay, here. But then, about to get paid on all of these. Well, I got paid on slutty already. Floater income is an additional, at no extra cost. It's all included in my margin and everything already. Is an additional $7,200. Now, these floaters can change every month. Okay, I can I can see opportunities in the market. This will keep me from getting bored of just Jeppy and Ulti. So I have the smart play here, and then I can satisfy human emotions here, giving me the feeling of hey, I get in on this or that or something's new. But this will stay. And I will do everything I you know, you really can't core compound Ulti. Okay, because it doesn't always recover the same way, at least in the past. Now it's holding steady. I mean, we're over $10 after a dollar dividend. It's amazing. Okay, and don't worry about reverse split and all that. Ulti's going to make a comeback. And as of February 2025, the people at Yield Max have more of an incentive to make Ulti work. Why? Because they have been subsidizing or giving us a reduced management fee. And that ends February, okay? It's coming sooner than you know it. It's a few months away. So they have a vested interest in making this work. So I'm combining these two. Tell me what you think, okay? And again, specific, hold on. Let's say Shadow. Shadow, I chose Jeppy and Ulti as my main combination. I didn't want Jep Q because... I feel there would be too much overlap and be too tech heavy because I have a lot of tech in Ulti already. So tell me if you think that I am better off for the stability part of my portfolio with JEPI combined with Ulti over using JEPQ. Your decision to pair Jeppy with Ulti instead of adding JEPQ makes a lot of sense for your portfolio's overall stability and income goals. Here's why. Why Jeppy is a better choice over JEPQ for stability. One, lower volatility. Jeppy focuses on low volatility, large cap U.S. stocks with an income strategy that includes selling covered calls on the S&P 500, which adds stability. I like Jet that. JEPQ, on the other hand, targets tech-heavy NASDAQ 100 stocks, which are more volatile due to the nature of the tech sector. Since you already have a strong tech focus with Ulti, adding JetQ would likely increase your portfolio's overall volatility. Two, diversification with income focus. 
Jeppy gives you broader market exposure, less focused on tech, while still generating significant monthly income. This helps diversify away from tech while keeping the consistent income flow. By sticking with Jeppy, you avoid the risk of overexposure to the tech sector, which you already have through alt -T. Three, stability with Jeppy. Jeppy is better suited for the stability portion of your portfolio because it's designed to reduce downside risk while generating income. JEPQ might provide higher income, but would expose you to more volatility, which you seem to want to avoid for this portion of your portfolio. Mub 4. Income Strategy. Both JEPI and JEPIQ use covered calls to generate income, but JEPI does so with a more conservative selection of stocks, which should help it hold up better during market downturns. Since you're using ULTI as the high income, high volatility play, pairing it with JEPI helps smooth out the ride. Alti Jeppy, the ideal combo. I like Alti that. Alti provides aggressive, high income from the tech sector, satisfying your need for big cash flow. Jeppy adds stability and consistent income, while also helping preserve capital with less volatility than JEPQ. In summary, Jepp offers the right balance of income and stability, complementing your high volatility Alti position perfectly. It's a smart choice to avoid JEPQ for now as it would over-concentrate your portfolio in tech. By combining JEPI and ULTI, you're creating a well-rounded, high-income portfolio with both aggressive and stable elements. Thank you, Shadow. We're going to wrap this up here. Tell me what you think in the comments. Support the channel with likes and comments. And of course, subscribe. Keyword for the day, ULTI, ugly girl. Have a nice day.